Today we discuss the cross product, but let me remind you of what something we did two videos ago, which was we defined one type of vector product called the dot product, and let me move out of the way. But for two vectors, V and W in Rn, the dot product of V and W, V dot W is a scalar, okay? Today is another vector product, but it's different. It's called the cross product. And here we need V and W in R3, okay? Must be R3. And then V cross W is a vector, also in R3. Okay, now here is the idea, and I touched on this at the end of the last video where we were finding the equation of lines and planes, we want V cross W to be orthogonal or perpendicular to both V and W. Now, in brown, I have written the definition, but do not memorize this. Maybe I'll put that in pink. So I would not memorize this formula as is. And one reason I started with it on the board is because personally me, there's no way I would memorize it like this. I would um, mess up some indices if I tried to just write it from, from memory. But before we get into how, you know, what is a good way to remember this formula, one thing I'd like to do is just check that in fact this is perpendicular to, well maybe I will check perpendicular to V and a similar calculation would show perpendicular to W. If I take, well how do we know if two vectors are perpendicular or orthogonal? Well, it's erased, but the dot product of the two should be zero. So here, if I take V1, V2, V3, dotted with this formula for V cross W, I'll just recopy, last component okay well how do we take the dot product of these two vectors it's going to be v1 times this first entry so it's going to be v1 v2 w3 minus v1 v3 w2 plus v2 times the second entry v2 v3 w1 minus v2 v1 w3 plus and then take v3 times the third entry v3 w1 oh excuse me v3 v1 w2 minus v3 v2 w1 now let me get three different colors let's get green pink and blue, and what do we see? V1, V2, W3, minus, okay, good, V1, V2, W3. Now the next one, minus V1, V3, W2, plus V1, V3, W2. Okay, good, so far, the green adds to zero, the pink adds to zero, and then we are left with here, V2, V3, W1, minus V2, V3, W1. Okay, and the blue adds to zero, we get zero. So in fact, this cross product V cross W is perpendicular to V. And as I mentioned, similarly, you could calculate it's perpendicular to W. But this is not a very good way to try to memorize it. Like I said, personally me, I would mess it up. So let me introduce a good way to remember how to calculate V cross W. The cross product of two vectors 
really uses the language of determinants, which is something from linear algebra. Okay, so what do I need to teach you in order to be able to calculate a cross product? First of all, the determinant of a two by two matrix. Well, what's a matrix? It's a rectangular array of numbers and typically this is the number of rows, this is the number of columns. Okay, so a two by two matrix, well the notation for a determinant is this kind of bracket and then we put two rows and two columns. So this is a symbol that means the determinant of a two by two matrix, okay. And this is, you take AD minus BC. This is the determinant of a two by two matrix and then Part two, the determinant of a three by three matrix. Well now, I need three rows, three columns, and this type of, well it looks like absolute value bars or length bars for a vector, but it stands for determinant. Here, say I have some A1, A2, A3. There's my first row. Then I have B1, B2, B3, my second row, C1, C2, C3 is my third row. So how we calculate this, I'm just gonna teach, well there are many ways to calculate a determinant. I will teach one way and the way that is most useful for cross product. I am gonna expand about this first row. So this will be defined to be A1 times the determinant where you cross off the column that you are in and the row that you are in. So this is in row one, column one. So let's see, okay, this is gonna be, we cross these two off and we have this determinant, B2, B3, C2, C3. Okay, and then we take minus A2, so the, the sign, S-I-G-N, is gonna go plus, minus, plus. This is how it goes as we expand about the first row. Okay, but now, so I have plus A1, crossed off the first row and the first column, and we have this determinant. Then I had a minus A2, then I cross off the first row and the second column, and I'm gonna have the determinant that I see here, B1, B3, C1, C3. Okay, let's write that. Determinant, B1, B3, C1, C3. And then plus A3, as I mentioned, it goes plus, minus, plus. But now it's gonna be another two by two determinant where I cross off this and I cross off this and I get B1, B2, C1, C2, this determinant. Okay, B1, B2, C1, C2. This is the determinant of a three by three um, matrix. And well, how do we calculate this? Here, this would be this two by two determinant, for example, is B2, C3 minus B3, C2, like this. Maybe in blue, before I define cross product, let's do an example here. The determinant, let's say five, two, one, six, is, well, it's five times six minus two times one. This determinant is 30 minus two is 28. Okay, this is an example. And similarly, let's do an example of a three by three. So if we had five, um, maybe I'll have one, zero, zero, one, two, one, one, one. Okay, here's a three by three matrix and we can use this formula. We have five times, well, I cross off the first row and the first column, I get one, two, one, one, this determinant, and then minus one times, I cross off this 
Let's see, I'll get my markers back. I cross out this and this. I get zero, two, one, one. Zero, two, one, one, and then plus zero times, well, it's gonna be zero times something. It doesn't really matter. We know the product of zero times any number is zero, but I can go ahead and write this as zero, one, one, one. Okay, so now let us finish this. This is five times, we have one minus two, minus one times zero minus two, plus zero, we get five times minus one, um, this becomes plus two, we get negative three. Okay, so here are just two examples of determinants, just to practice calculating. But now let's get into cross product. Now I have V and W, and we may write the cross product this way. We put I, J, K, and then we put V1, V2, V3, W1, W2, W3, which will be I times this determinant, cross off that row and column, V2, V3, W2, W3, and then minus J, okay? Cross off this row and this column, V1, V3, W1, W3, V1, V3, W1, W3, finally plus K, Cross off this row and this column, V1, V2, W1, W2. Okay? And now if you, if you calculate these little two by two determinants, you will see V2, W3 minus V3, W2. Those are the entries that we had down here in brown when I wrote the definition. Here is an example and this is the example that we ended with last time, or I will go back to the example we ended with last time. We were trying to find the equation of a plane, but first let's do this. Let's find V cross W. Okay, well this we create like this, and then we put V in the second row, we put W in the third row, we get I times Okay, cross off this row and column. Two, three, five, three. Minus J, okay, cross off the second row, I mean, excuse me, second column, first row. One, three, minus one, three. And then plus K. And now we have the third column, first row. One, two, minus one, five. We get I times, this is six minus 15, minus, excuse me, minus J times three, well, minus minus three is three plus three, and then plus K, we have five um, minus minus two, five, plus two, we get minus nine I minus six J plus seven K, okay? Or you could also write this as minus nine comma minus six, seven. So here is the cross product of these two vectors. Now, let us go back to the example that we ended with, and maybe I will rewrite it on the board just so that we remember. This was at the end, and I mentioned this came off an old Calc 2 final. We want the equation, or an equation, if the plane contained these three points, and we got to the point of that V, let's see, which is the vector PQ, is, well, it's here, one, two, three, and W, which is the vector PR, is here, that these were both 
parallel to the plane or lying in the plane, but I will just state it this way. And we needed a vector perpendicular to the plane to make the normal vector. Or what the way I ended the video at the last lesson was I need a vector perpendicular to both V and W. And here we have one. So we can take N to be here, V cross W, which we have calculated. It's minus nine, minus six, seven. And then we might as well use the simplest point for finding an equation, just use zero, zero, zero. And then, uh oh, I'm gonna have to erase the equation with it be minus nine, x minus six, y plus seven, z is zero. Okay, so this is an equation, and of course I've really done minus nine, x minus zero, and minus six, y minus zero, like this, plus seven, z minus zero, but it comes out to this equation. So here is our final answer for an equation for this plane. Here's the exact same type of problem, we just have three, different points than the last one, but we wanna find the equation of a plane that passes through these three points. Well, let's just label them. Say this is P, Q, and R. I can take V to be the vector P, Q. This will be parallel to the plane, and W to be the vector P, R. Similarly, parallel to the plane. This is, well, it's gonna be three minus one, minus one, minus three, and six minus two. This vector is two, negative four, four. Okay, then PR, we take five minus one, we take two minus three, and we take two minus two. PR is the vector four, minus one, zero. Okay. Now, well, we need a vector that is perpendicular to both V and W, and this, this will be a normal vector for the plane. Well, any vector non-zero that's perpendicular to both of these, we can use as a normal vector. So let's compute, first of all, the cross product. Okay. So I put V, I put W, this is I times, we have this determinant of this, two by two, which is minus four, four, minus one, zero. Then minus J times, okay, we cross off like this, two, four, four, zero. And then plus K times, we cross off the third column, first row, we see it, two minus four, four minus one. Okay, almost there. We have I times, this is zero, plus four, we have minus J, times, this is zero, minus 16, we have plus k, times, this is minus two, plus um, 16. Yeah, okay, wonderful. And then we get 4i plus 16j plus 16, plus 14k, this is V cross W. Now, let me use as my normal vector, I'm gonna use two, eight, seven. And this is perfectly fine because, well, it's a multiple of V cross W. And so this vector, all I've done is I took V cross W divided by two. And this vector will be also perpendicular to uh, V and W. I will use this as my normal vector. 
and I will use P as the point, although I could have used any of the three points. And then an equation for my plane, maybe I will do that in black, is then 2x minus 1 plus 8y minus 3 plus 7z minus 2 equals 0. I will underline and then I will get out of the way. So this is the equation of the plane containing these three points. And if you are unsure, if you did it right, or if you have time and you, on a test or quiz, something like this, and you wanna check your answer, you can just take each point and put it in for the corresponding x, y, and z, and you should get zero. And this would tell you that you have it right. Now a very important comment to make, well, the comment is just, as you know, I used a multiple of v cross w for, for my normal vector n. And I mentioned as I was doing this that there was no problem because any multiple of v cross w will still be parallel to v cross w and will still be perpendicular to both v and w, okay? Well, to get a normal vector for a plane, of course we need non-zero multiple, but in any case, this leads us to the question, where does the length and the direction of V cross W come from? Or what significance does it have? And the answer, well, let's use some geometry to understand this because we know everything with vectors has a geometric side and an algebraic side and so far except for v cross w being perpendicular to both v and w which is um, it's a geometric concept and also an algebraic concept but everything i've been doing is with components in terms of my calculations so let's discuss the geometric side so first, maybe I will mention direction. Where does the direction come from? And this is what's called the right-hand rule. Okay, so to use this rule, you have to know your left from your right, and sometimes I forget, okay, but it is this side, this is my right. Okay, so what this means, if I have V and W, okay, you take your right hand, you put your pointer on V, and you put your second finger on W, and then the way that your thumb points gives the direction of V cross W. So here's V, W, V cross W is going to point in this direction. But, so this is the direction. We know it will be perpendicular here and also perpendicular here. Okay, so this gives direction. Now, what would happen if you try to use your left hand? If you put your pointer on V, now I've gotta come over here, pointer on V and, oh, on W like this, okay. You see, left hand, it's not the same direction. The pointer on V, second finger on W, left hand points down. And that's the other direction. You wanna use right hand rule. V cross W points the way your thumb goes according to your right hand. Okay, so this is where the direction comes from, is this right hand rule. But now what about the length of V cross W? So now we know the direction and we know that I'll just put this also, we've already talked about this, but V cross W is orthogonal to both V and W. Okay, that I put with my little green, those are supposed to be right angle signs. The length is also something geometric. The length is the area of the parallelogram 
expand by V and W. If this is V and this is W, it's very similar to here, I've just made them a little smaller, then we have this parallelogram. And this is something that we did, for instance, when we were adding two vectors, right? This and this, and this area here, this area is the length of V cross W. Now, everything under this answer, use geometry, comment, this will give us uniquely V cross W. We know it's going to have direction given by the right hand rule. It will be perpendicular to both V and W, and now we know its length, okay? We take the length to be the area. You could draw it here, the area of this parallelogram. And this is an important the geometric understanding of this cross product. But let me say one more thing. I'd like to connect the cross product with the angle between V and W. We know the dot product, we can't connect between the angle between V and W. Maybe I will write this now and then I will talk about the cross product. So recall uh, where theta is the angle between V and W. We had that V dot W is the length of V, length of W cosine theta. Okay, maybe I will leave this up in a box. So let's think about what we can say about this angle theta from the cross product, or this is part of the geometric understanding. Okay, well, here I have V, here I have W, here is the parallelogram spanned by V and W. So we know the area here, the area is the length of V cross W. Right, I said that below, okay? But let's think about the area, maybe I will do this in blue, in terms of how I have labeled things. Well, this is a parallelogram. We can take the, the base times the height. So the area here is, is the length of V times the height. But now, what is the height? Well, this takes us back to trigonometry. Here is theta, okay? And here is the height. The height, the height over the length of W equals the sine of theta. Right, because I, the way this is, the height, this is a right triangle, okay? Where this is opposite over hypotenuse. So now, maybe I should um, erase this right hand rule part. We get that the area, well, if I just multiply through, I see the height is sine theta times the length of W. Now substitute it here. We get it's the length of V, the length of W, sine theta. And so what we get from this, look, the area is this, the area is also this. We get the relationship between the cross product and the angle between V and W. The length of the cross product is the length of V, length of W, sine theta. And you can see um, it's very similar to the statement about the dot product, except of course we're gonna need the length of cross product if, if the right hand side as it is, is a number. Here the dot product is already a number. We don't need the length, but a similar statement involves the length. So the length of 
v cross w, length of v, length of w, times the sine of the angle between v and w. Now, before I do anything else, let's make an observation about parallel vectors. Let's say v, w are in R3 and um, non-zero. Okay, so then v, w are parallel. Well, this happens if and only if we know that the angle between is either zero or pi. It depends if they point in the same direction or if they point in opposite directions. And this happens if and only if, well, the sine is zero. So we get that the length of V cross W is zero, but that the only vector with zero length is in fact the zero vector. So this gives us a characterization of parallel vectors in terms of two vectors are parallel. Of course, in R3, that's the only thing that makes sense for the cross product, but if and only if their cross product is zero. Okay, what I'd like to do now is calculate these four cross products, but I'm not gonna write down any determinants. I really wanna think about what we were just discussing. Now, first of all, what do we know? So I'm taking I cross J, J cross I, J cross K, and I cross K. And if you take any of these, um, well, first of all, we know they sit in R3 like this, but pairwise they are orthogonal and they are unit. So if I think about the length of what any of these cross products will be, I have two vectors which are unit, length one, length one, and they meet at 90 degrees, okay? And so this area of the parallelogram spanned by, well, any of the two in A, B, C, or D will be this area which is area one. Okay, so in fact, all of these are unit vectors. And, um, well, we know what's a vector that's uh, perpendicular to both I and J? Well, we know it's K, but there's really two directions. So it's either gonna be K or minus K for each one of these, right? It's unit, it's perpendicular to both of these, but we have to figure out the direction using right-hand rule. And similarly, this one will either be I or minus I, and this one will be J or minus J. Okay, so let's figure it out. The first one, we take I, pointer, we take J, second finger, and K, well, right-hand rule says I cross J will point up. And in fact, the answer here is the vector K. Oh, this is the vector K. Now, what about J cross I? Okay, let me come to this side because I have my pointer on J, my second finger on I, and you notice right hand rule, my thumb is pointing down. So J cross I is minus K. Okay, so far so good. Now I have to line up my first finger goes to J, my second finger goes to K, and you notice my thumb is pointing out of the board. Well, it's going to be this, the I direction, J, K, it's coming here. Well, it's this one, I. The so J cross K is positive I, and finally, I want I cross K. First finger here, oh, maybe I'm gonna come to the other side. My first finger on I, my second finger on K, and you notice my thumb is pointing back this way into the board. So I cross K goes, the direction is this way, which is negative J. So I like these examples because we get to think about the right-hand rule here, and I didn't calculate any determinants. Now, another thing, 
that we notice is one property of determinants. So you see something here, there's a general property that we see illustrated here. If we take two vectors, V and W in R3, we take V cross W, this is negative W cross V, and you can really think about it in terms of the right-hand rule, just like we thought about here, instead of being I and J can be any V and W, it's gonna have the same length, this and this will have the same length, it's just the area of the parallelogram spanned by V and W. Um, and both of these will, will be perpendicular to both V and W, but they point in opposite directions. V cross W and W cross V point in opposite directions. And then another property, maybe I should change this to plural. This, in fact, we saw because we talked about parallel vectors the cross product of any two parallel vectors is zero and V is parallel to itself. But that's just another property I figured I would mention. We're given two vectors in R3 and we wanna find the area of the parallelogram spanned by the two and find a unit vector that's orthogonal to both V and W. Well, okay, what are we gonna do? We're gonna first calculate V cross W. And then we know the length of V cross W is the first part. It's the area of the parallelogram. We can then take V cross W, divide by its length, and we get a unit vector that will be orthogonal or perpendicular to both V and W. This is our strategy here. One minus two, two zero minus one minus one. We have I times here, cross off the first row, the first column, minus two, two, minus one, minus one. Minus J times, cross off like this, one, two, zero, minus one. And then plus K times, like this, one minus two, zero minus one. One minus two, zero minus one. Okay, here we go. We have I times, this is two plus two. We have minus J times minus one, and then plus K times minus one. We get four I, plus j minus k. All right, so here is v cross w, or we could also write this in as entries, it would be four, one, minus one, that vector. But let us go ahead and calculate the length. It's a square root of 16 plus one plus one square root of 18. So this is part of the problem here. This is the area that's asked for, is the square root of 18. Okay, and then the final thing to do is we want a unit vector, maybe I will call this U. We just take one over the length, and then we have four, one, minus one, or we could write this as follows. So this is the other part of this problem, the unit vector that is orthogonal to both V and W. Here's another example, we have three points, P, Q, R. We want the area of the triangle that P, Q, R, so it has these three points as vertices, and then find an equation of the plane 
containing the triangle. Let me draw a picture. We have three vertices, say P, Q, and R, and they make a triangle. Well, there is a parallelogram here. If I just continue this, maybe on the lightly, what do we see? Well, the area of this triangle will be one half the area of the parallelogram. And we know how to calculate this. This is vector PQ cross uh, ooh, PR. We take the cross product, take its length. This, this part without the one half is the area of the whole thing. Half of it gives us the area of the triangle. Okay, and then this part about the equation of the plane, well, we could use PQ cross PR as a normal vector, for example. But let's do the area part first. First, be before I do anything, I need to calculate this vector and this vector, PQ. Okay, we take five minus one, one minus two, five minus three, we get four minus one, two, and vector PR, oops, um, we have two minus one, three minus two, and three minus three. Okay, this is one, one, zero. So I will call this V, and I will call this W. Now let's compute V cross W. Four minus one, two, one, one, zero. We have I, minus one, two, one, zero, minus J, four, two, one, zero, and finally, plus K, four minus one, one, one. Okay. I think I have space to fit this. We have, well, I is, uh, zero minus two, and then we have minus, this would be zero minus two, but with a minus it becomes plus two j. But now with k, what do we have? We have four minus a minus one is four plus one. So we have plus five k. Okay, this is the cross product. Now let's go back to our area. We have the cross product. And so this area will be one half the square root of four plus four plus 25, which is 25 and eight is 33. So we get the square root of 33 over two. But this is the area. Now, there's another part to this, which is an equation of the plane containing this triangle. And let's see, I do in fact have room on the board for this. Let me draw a line here. Because I have all of the work, I just need to write an equation for this plane. Well, I have a normal vector I can use. Maybe I will do this in brown. I can use, I will use N, is minus two, two, five. Let me step out for a moment. It comes from here. We calculated V cross W. This vector is perpendicular to both V, which is PQ, and W, which is PR, okay? And then I can use as a point on my plane, I can use any of the three. I might as well use one, two, three. Now I have a normal vector and a point, I can immediately write down an equation of the plane. This will be 
minus 2x minus 1 plus 2 y minus 2 and then plus 5z minus 3 uh oh equals equals zero <laughs> i had to move down a line to fit the whole equation but we have minus 2x minus 1 plus 2 y minus 2 plus 5z minus 3 so here is the second part of the problem which is an equation of the plane Well, here is my very last example involving equations of planes, at least for today. This is a problem I had on an exam a number of years ago, the last time I taught Calc 3, but we want to find an equation of the plane containing this point and containing this line. Okay, so this connects us back to last section, even more so because we see a line here and we discussed this in the last video. Okay, well, this really is no more than things we have been doing, except there's a first initial step, which is we have one point on the plane. Let me call this P. And in order to get myself going, I need two more points on the plane. So let's take Q. Well, I can just take T equals zero. Maybe I will put this to kind of explain what I'm doing, I'm gonna use t equals zero for q. I get the point four minus one, zero must be on the plane. And finally, I can take, for example, t equals one, and I get the point three, one minus three is also on the plane. Now, these are not the only two choices I could have found any two points, distinct points, on this line, and they would work for Q and R. Okay, but now that I have Q and R, now I can find vectors V and W. This will be vector PQ, and W will be vector PR. Okay, so this is four minus one, um, minus one, minus zero, and zero minus minus one, which is zero plus one, we get three minus one, one. And here we get three minus one, one minus zero, and minus three plus one, which is, we have two, one, minus two. So these are both parallel, to the plane. Okay, now this is no different than most of our other examples on finding the equation of a plane. We need to find a vector perpendicular to both V and W. So let us calculate V cross W. We have I, and then we have minus one, 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 minus two, minus J, okay? We get three, one, two, minus two, and then plus K, and with, we get three, minus one, two, one. Okay, so now let's compute these. We have two, minus one, this becomes I, and then for J, we have um, minus six, minus two, that's negative eight. Then with this, it's a plus eight, J. And then with the K, we have, let's see, three plus two, we get five K. Okay, oh, pardon me. So this is, I will use this as my normal vector. Maybe I'll write that here. We will use N, is one, eight, five. And then I will also use the point one, zero, minus one. Okay. Now, maybe at the very bottom, I will write the equation, or, well, it's an equation for this plane, but it's the one corresponding to this normal vector and this point. 
we have 1x minus 1 plus 8y minus 0. And then we have plus 5 is going to be z minus minus 1 becomes plus 1 equals 0. And this would be our final answer here as an equation for this plane.